All right, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about causal diagrams. Now, in the last video, we talked about what causality is. Uh, it's when we, when we have the ability to reach in and change the value of some treatment variable, we can figure out what would then change as a result about the outcome variable, right? If changing X leads to a change in Y, that means that X causes Y in some way. We also talked about how we can get at those estimates. How can we estimate whether or not X causes Y? Well, we have to have some idea of a counterfactual. We observe that you, for example, went to the doctor and we observe how healthy you are afterwards. In order to figure out what the effect of the doctor was on you, we need to figure out what was your counterfactual. What would have happened to you if you had not gone to the doctor? And so, in this video, we're going to get at one way of trying to understand those counterfactuals and figure out how we can get figure out what they are. And it turns out that we're going to have to have some sort of model. And what I mean by that is that we have to have some sort of idea of what it was that generated the data in the first place. What is the underlying process by which the things that we see happen? So in, in, that, in, that, in the example of the doctor, uh, having a predisposition to being sick in the first place might make you more likely to go to the doctor. There are a bunch of things that might make you more likely to go to the doctor. For example, having health insurance might make you more likely to go to the doctor if you live in the United States. Uh, how uh, the experiences that your family members have had with the doctor might affect whether or not you go to the doctor. So these are all things that are part of our data generating process. If we observe that you went to the doctor, that is a piece of data that we have on you. Okay, what led that to occur? Well, it's these three things that I just talked about, plus a whole bunch of other things that I didn't mention. That's what I mean by data generating process. There's some sort of uh, there's some sort of process going on under the hood that made that happen. And if we want to understand what the counterfactual was, then we need to be able to model out what we think that data generating process is, which means that we're going to need to make assumptions about how we think the world works. Now, that sounds a little bit uh, scary in that we have to make assumptions in order to figure all this stuff out. Wouldn't it just be nice if we didn't have to make assumptions at all? Because clearly, whatever result we come to, whatever conclusion we come to, is going to be based on the assumptions that we've just made. And unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. We have to make those assumptions. If you want to make any sort of prediction, and that's what this is, understanding the counterfactual, that is a prediction. We are predicting what would have happened if you had done something else, right? But if we want to make any sort of prediction, we have to make some sort of assumptions. Even if you're going to make a very simple prediction, Let's say I want to predict that the sun is going to rise tomorrow. I need to make some assumptions. I need to assume that tomorrow is going to be like today. I need to assume that the sun has not burned out overnight. Now, these are pretty, uh, uh, probably no one's going to doubt those assumptions that I'm making, right? But there's still assumptions that I have to make. If I want to make any sort of prediction, I need to have assumptions to go along with it. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking all of those assumptions and we're going to be using them in a very structured way that's going to make it very easy for us to figure out the counterfactual and whether or not we can figure out the effect of X on Y. We're going to be using causal diagrams. Okay. Now, what a causal diagram is, is we're going to take all the assumptions that we make and we're basically just going to draw them out on a graph. We're not going to have to write down any equations. Uh, we're not going to have to do any advanced math. We're just going to be able to draw out our assumptions graphically, and this will tell us immediately. It's so easy a computer could do it. It will tell us immediately whether or not we can identify the effect of X on Y. So what is a causal diagram? So let's take an example. Let's talk about whether or not being a tech company improves your profits. Okay. So we have a treatment variable there. This company is either a tech company or not. And we have an outcome variable. We have the profits that you made in a given year. Now, we can just look in the data and we can say, oh, we observe that, you know, tech, we observe the profits of tech companies and we observe the profits of companies that are not tech companies. And we might say, okay, well, on average, tech companies have higher profits. But there could be many other reasons why they have higher profits other than being tech companies. For example, tech companies tend to be more likely to get embroiled into intellectual property lawsuits. Right? Just so happens that you know there's a lot of tech development going on, so you might be likely to get sued if your technology looks a little bit too much like somebody else's. So if, you, if it's being a tech company leads you to be more likely to have a higher uh, rate of, of getting sued, we would expect that those lawsuits would lower your profits. So what's really going on here? We might observe that tech companies on average make, I'm going to make up a number, 10 million more in profits a year than non-tech companies. Um, but if part of what's going on is that tech companies 
get more lawsuits and lawsuits lower your profits, maybe the effect of being a tech company is actually better. Maybe tech companies, if you took out the part about intellectual property, would make $20 million more. So we want to figure out the counterfactual. Let's take our assumptions and let's write them out in a model. And you might have missed it, but I've actually already said all the assumptions that we need to know about this particular problem. What are the assumptions that we've made? We know that being a tech company leads you to spend more money on intellectual property lawsuits. That's assumption number one. And I'm saying more, but it actually doesn't matter. I can, I can just say that being a tech company affects whether or not you spend money on intellectual property lawsuits. Okay. Uh, we also are going to say that intellectual property lawsuits lower your profits. That's another assumption that I'm going to make. Again, really, I'm just assuming that it affects your profits. I could be assuming that it goes up or down. And we're going to assume that being a tech company has some sort of effect on your profits directly. Okay. So these are three assumptions and we can write these three assumptions down in the form of a graph. So we've already mentioned our three assumptions. Let's write them down. Uh, so first assumption that we're going to talk about is we're going to say that being a tech company has an effect on your intellectual property lawsuits. Okay. So what do we have there? We have two variables. We have whether or not you're a tech company and we have how much you have to spend on your intellectual property lawsuits. So we're going to write down those two variables. Those are going to be part of our causal diagram. So we're just going to write down tech to represent being a tech company. We'll put a circle around it. That's going to be a part of our diagram. It's a variable on our diagram, which we're going to represent with a circle. We also have the amount you spend on intellectual property lawsuits. That's a variable as well. We're going to write that one down to represent with ip.spend uh, and put a circle around that. Then we're going to draw an arrow from one to the other. This is an assumption as well. We are assuming that being a tech company affects how much you spend on intellectual property lawsuits. Uh, and we're assuming that the causality goes in that direction. Tech, being a tech company has an effect on your lawsuits, not the other way around. We're making an assumption. We're making an assumption that the IP lawsuits that you are subject to does not cause you to be a tech company, which sounds pretty reasonable to me. Okay, so that's assumption number one. Let's, now let's put in assumption number two. We know that being a tech company uh, might affect your profits. And so we're going to put in uh, profits as a variable on its own, put a circle around that. And then we're going to say that being a tech company has some effect on your profits. So we're going to draw an arrow from being a tech company to profits. Right? We're assuming that the causality runs in that direction. Now we do have to make these assumptions. Like I said, if we're not willing to make assumptions about where these arrows are and which direction they go in, we're not going to be able to figure out the counterfactual. Lastly, we're going to put in the assumption that IP lawsuits are going to lower your profits, right? That your profits are not going to lead to you getting lawsuits. Instead, the lawsuits are going to lower your profits because you have to spend all this money on lawyers and things like that. So we're going to draw an arrow from the IP, the IP spend, uh, the intellectual property spending on lawsuits, towards your profits. And so here is our causal diagram. Now, this is simplified. I've left certainly a bunch of things out that might affect your profits. But this is the basic idea. We've taken the assumptions that we have about the world and we have encoded them in this diagram, which includes the variables that we're interested in and the ways that those variables causally affect each other. And that's it. That's all that a causal diagram is. Uh, and in future videos, we're going to be able to show how we can use these causal diagrams to figure out the effects that we're interested in. And so if we were interested, for example, in what the effect of being a tech company is on your profits, causal diagram is going to tell us exactly what we need to do in order to be able to estimate that effect. And so we'll see that in future videos. Thank you.